All right, back on the MMA Hour. That was uh, a snippet of the great Tyrone Spung documentary that uh, was just released by the makers of the Ream documentary, which you obviously know a lot about if you're an MMA fan watching this show. Um, unbelievable stuff, and you saw right there. Very compelling. So uh, check that out. You can check that out at Tyrone, T-I, excuse me, T-Y-R-O-N-E dash Spung spong.com learn more about him he makes his mma debut at the world series of fighting number one on november 3rd in las vegas thank you very much to their president sugar ray cefo for stopping by okay in a minute we will be joined by the current ufc interim welterweight champion carlos the natural born killer condit who faces george st pierre in one of the most anticipated bouts of the year ufc already uh, promoting this this fight card which takes place on november 17th in montreal at ufc 154 uh, it's uh, it's the return to montreal they haven't been there uh, in almost two years, the Bell Center over there in Montreal, the home of the Canadians. So uh, a lot of people are very excited about that. Tickets went on sale recently. And my mother, my own mother, is so excited that the UFC has returned to Montreal that she went out and bought two tickets for herself. No freebies uh, in the Helwani household. We go and we pay for our own tickets. And my mother and uh, I believe my father will be in attendance at UFC 154 and uh, she may or may not be a Carlos Condit fan. I'll leave it at that. If you follow me on Twitter, you know what I'm talking about. So uh, we'll, we'll be talking to Carlos about that uh, uh, in a minute or so. Um, in around 20 minutes, we'll be talking to Eddie Alvarez. Then we'll be talking to uh, our good friend Tyler, Tyler Ransom. Uh, Ed Soros, Stefan Bonner still to come as well. And a reminder that at 4 o'clock, we'll go to the conference call, the John jones Chell Sun conference call. For now, let us welcome in the aforementioned Carlos Condit. Carlos, how are you? I'm doing great, Ariel. How are you? How are you doing? Good to have you on your favorite MMA show, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Every Good Monday. Back. Every Monday you listen, and uh, I, I hear that you actually stop training just to listen to the show. Is that correct? Uh, no. <laughs> sure. Wow. Okay. You could have just lied, but uh, I appreciate it nonetheless. I know that sometimes, maybe once or twice, you've checked out the show, and I'm just kidding. By the way, it's good to have you. Uh, it's good to have you back as you prepare for UFC 154. So, a lot of questions to ask you at the top. This is the one that I've been dying to ask you. What do you make of all this? You know, Anderson Silva, GSP, people talking about it. Like, it's like this fight isn't going to happen. It's like we're going through the whole Nick Diaz thing all over again. Does that bug you? Um, it doesn't bug me. I, uh, you know, it, if, if anything, it, it motivates me. Um, you know, I, you know, the fact that, you know, I'm kind of being looked past is, uh, it's, uh, you know, it, it kind of puts a, puts a little bit of a, of a, uh, you know, some fire under my ass. And, uh, you know, I, I, I love kind of being the spoiler, you know, the spoiler in the Nick Diaz, George St. Pierre scenario. And now, you know, I get to play that role again. Did you notice that, though? Because sometimes I even have to check myself because we talk about it so much, and Anderson talks about it, and he just fought, and it comes up. And, you know, Dana, I think Dana has done a good job of always saying, hey, you know, relax. We still have to have this fight, and Carlos can definitely win this fight. But have you noticed that it's almost like people have forgotten that you are you're actually have to go in there and, and, and fight GSP on November 17th? Um, well, you know, it's... <sighs> The, the the hype between you know the hype for a super fight between George and uh, and Anderson is, is huge and it's been you know it's been uh, talked about for a long time um, you know the the, the fight uh, with with me and George you know there, there's not as much hype behind it um, but you know that's uh, honestly I, don't, I really don't think that matters I think we're gonna have a hell of a fight um, and you know people are gonna be wondering why they weren't excited about it after the fight after the fact what i find so interesting about this fight is since you fought nick diaz in february you've essentially for the last what eight or so months you've been thinking about one guy that's gsp you knew you were going to fight him gsp for the last seven or so months has just tried to get back to 100 percent. you know he may have thought about you but his his focus every day when he woke up was to try to get that knee back to 100 percent. do you think that plays into your hand because you haven't had to worry about any of that stuff you're just focusing on beating this guy while the other guy is just trying to get back to where he once was um you know i, I don't think i don't think it plays a huge role you know george's um you know, one of the best uh, best fighters that's ever graced the octagon, and 
you know, I, 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 I think that, you know, yeah, he was, he was rehabbing and trying to recover his knee, but, you know, I'm sure he was doing whatever he could to, to keep his skills sharp and, and probably improve in some areas also. There's a lot of talk, obviously, you know, the Jackson influence with TriStar. You guys are kind of sister schools. But how many times have you actually trained with GSP in the gym? Um, I have never trained with George. Um, you know, we've never sparred each other. Um, we've been at the gym uh, at the same time, you know, maybe two or three times. Um, but, you know, the last couple of years, he's kind of come down here less and less. Right. And, and, and what is going on? Obviously, Greg has a very busy schedule, the head coach, Greg Jackson. What is going on with that? Is he not even training you at all for this fight? Is he completely staying away or is he going to train you and then just not corner you? Um, well, basically, I'm not working with with Greg on an individual basis. We're not game planning. We're not working any specific techniques. Um, Greg does run classes. Um, you know, he does run uh, run practice for for the fighters, and and you know, I'm you know, I, I I'm there training during that time. But uh, you know, as far as working with me uh, specifically for this fight, or you know, for George, or anything, he he is uh, completely kind of. Um, Stepped, uh, stepped away. So, who will be in your corner for this fight on the seventeenth? Um, uh, heading up my camp is is going to be kind of a, a you know combination between Mike Winkle John and uh, Chris Luttrell. Um, Chris is uh, is a guy, one of the founding members of, of Jackson's, you know, one of the original members, and uh, you know, a phenomenal coach and. Um, you know, it's it's been awesome working with him, um, and then I have some some assistant coaches that I've been working with. But you know, uh, mainly it's uh, Mike Winklejohn and uh, Chris Luttrell. So, so Mike Winklejohn, who is half of the team, you know, it's Jackson Winklejohn. He has no problem with the whole GSP issue. No, they they really hadn't worked together at all. So, um, yeah, so it's not an issue. So now you were recently in Montreal for that uh, that kickoff press conference. How did the people treat you over there, my uh, my fellow Montrealers? Did they treat you kindly, or did you feel like it was a bit of a hostile environment for you there? No, you know what? I I didn't feel um, any hostility at all, man. I actually, they they were great. You know, they were you know they were excited and they were cheering George. You know, he's their 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 hometown guy. But I got a pretty warm reception as well, and you know, everybody's very respectful. Um, and it just really strikes me as a, as a fight town. Um, the the fans seem, you know, knowledgeable and, uh, and and respectful. And you know, I'm I can't wait to go out on uh, in in November. How long were you actually there for? Uh, it was a it was a whirlwind trip. It was <laughs> uh, I don't even think I was in Montreal for 24 hours. Wow, you didn't even sleep there. I did. I came in. Uh, I got there late, uh, late the night before the press conference. Um, you know, got up early, did the press conference, and then headed straight to the airport. And did you get a sense for how big? I don't think he's quite at Anderson Silva in Brazil level, but did you get a sense for how popular and and what kind of a deal or a big deal I should say GSP is in his hometown of Montreal while you were there? Um, you know, because I didn't spend a lot of time there, I I, I didn't really. Um, you know, get get a, a chance to kind of experience that. But, I mean, I, I could imagine. Now, do you feel as though, I mean, let's be honest. So the guy's been out. It's it's a major injury. He hasn't fought in, what, since April of 2011. So it's going to be almost a year and a half or so since he fought. Do you, do you truly believe that someone at, at, at his level coming back from such a serious surgery and injury can really get back to where he once was? Um, you know, I, I don't know. You know, that's that's up for speculation. Um, all I know is, you know, t- taking that for granted, um, assuming that he's not going to be, uh, you know, the, the the best, you know, uh, George that, that that we've seen, um, is a mistake. You know, if I if I think that, you know, I, that I'm going to have an easy time with him because he's coming off an injury, you know, that that can be a um, you know, really uh, detrimental to me. You know, I'm I'm training and I'm preparing for um, George St. Pierre. Uh, you know, the 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 man, the myth, the legend. You know, hmm. uh, you know, and, and nothing less. And considering the fact that this date was booked a long time ago, does a part of you think that he may have rushed his return? Uh, pardon the pun, but uh, but to, to make November seventeenth, and and maybe you know it would have been better for him to come back in December or January, something like that. 
I don't know. Uh, like, are you banking you know, on any you, of that kind of stuff? No, I'm not. I'm not banking on that. That's kind of kind of what I was just saying. Is, right. Um, well, you know, George, George has been been posting videos, um, you know, over the summer of him him training, of his recovery, you know, you know, saying that he that he's on track, you know, all all the news coming out of his camp was that you know he's he's looking better than ever, and you know, I, I have to, um, you know, I, I have to believe it. I have no no uh, no reason to doubt it. Like I said earlier, I mean, obviously, this is a guy that you've had a lot of time to think about since you last fought in uh, in February, Super Bowl weekend. Are you the kind of guy who studies tape? And if so, have you, in your mind, been able to pinpoint around a month, exactly a month before the fight, what his biggest weaknesses are? How do you beat this guy? How do you exploit him? Um, I, I do watch some tape. I don't... Uh... I don't immerse myself in in, uh, in my opponent's fights, but I, I, I watch some, you know, and, and, and use that to, to kind of strategize and, and see what I need to train. Um, as far as you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't really see George having a weakness. Um, you know, he's. I think, I think a lot of his opponents in the past have been like, oh, well, George is. You know, George doesn't have a solid chin. You know, George. You know, George is this or George is that, and that was their mistake. Is you know, George? George is about as as complete and and solid a fighter as as you know has ever competed in in, in the sport. Um, what I need to focus on is just being being the best I can be. Um, you know, just bringing bringing all my weapons to bear. Um, not only my uh, you know my, my skills, but um, you know my, my 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 mental fortitude. You know, this is going to be a tough fight. Uh, I know that you know this. This is definitely going to take some 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 heart and um, and some uh, I don't know some some grit to pull off. Um, and you know that that's that's kind of where I feel that I have uh, I, I I you know I have something to to bank on. Now, he's been accused of not going for the finish in his last few fights. Do you think he's that kind of fighter? Do you think he just tries to go for the easy win? Um, I think you know, in, in in his last fights, yeah. But you know, I I think that, I mean, you know, having watched a lot of tape recently, and and you know, his his fights in the past, man, were 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 pretty amazing. You know, he he is dangerous. He he uh, he does he has annihilated a lot of of opponents. And uh, no, I, like, like I said, I, I'm I'm training for the best, George. I'm I'm training for. Um, and preparing for you know George at his best, at his most most dangerous. So, um, you know, you, we'll just have to see how the fight plays out. But to, just to be clear, you do think in his last few fights that he hasn't put forth a hundred percent of his effort to try to finish the fights. Is that accurate? Um. Uh, well, I mean, I, I, yeah. I, I mean, I guess I think he could have done more. Um, oh. You know, he, he you know he's, he's had a. Um, yeah, I mean, he 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 he's been looking to to win, and I think I think main, maintain his his position um, as opposed to you know re- really fighting um, with you know with a lot of fire um, like like he did when he was up and coming um, and and a hungrier fighter. Uh, so yeah, I, I, you know, there's there's a difference, and and but I'm you know I don't I don't fault him for that. I think that you know when you get to that position, you know, things change. Um, you know, m- motivations are are different than they were when you were that uh, the young up and comer. Very well said. All right, Carlos. Uh, I know you got to go, so I appreciate the time. We'll have a chance to talk to you before before the fight, of course, in my hometown. So if you need any help over there, if you need any backup, anything of that sort, you know who to call. All right. All right, man. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks Keep so much, Carlos, and uh, good luck in training in the next month. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in Montreal. There he is, Carlos, the natural-born killer condit who faces GSP November 17th in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, the Bell Center, UFC 154. Can't wait for that fight. And in the co-main event, you have Johnny Hendricks and Martin Kampman fighting for a chance, especially if Condit wins, for a chance to fight for the, uh, the undisputed welterweight title. And it's interesting because right now, coming off UFC 153, a lot of uncertainty at 170 and 185 because you've got 
Anderson Silva, who's the champion at 185, who is saying that he wants to fight GSP, of course, if he wins. If he loses, it's going to be it's going to be tough to make that fight. There was also a lot of talk on Saturday in Rio of Anderson Silva versus John Jones. But now that John Jones is fighting Chael Sonnen on April 27th of next year, and then you consider the long line of guys at 205 that's going to build between now and then, not quite sure if that fight's going to happen. So it looks like the, the big super fight out there for Anderson, we'll talk to Ed about this um, when he joins us at 3 o'clock, but the big super fight out there for Anderson would be GSP. If Carlos Condit wins, well, that takes that off the table. So what I'm getting at here is if I'm Chris Weidman, if I'm Michael Bisping, if I'm Alan Belcher, if I'm Tim Boach, I'm rooting for a Carlos Condit win on, on November 17th, and and you may even be rooting for a Chell Sonnen win on April 27th of next year, but that would really open things up for Anderson to remain at 185 and defend his title against either Bisping or I think the winner of Tim Boach versus Chris Weidman. So very interesting times. I think it's it's crazy that we're talking about GSP and, and Anderson right now. I really do think it's crazy, and I think it's insulting to Carlos Condit. And not just saying that to be like, oh, Mr. Pro Condit, as he just came off our show, but... We were just in this position in February of this past year, Super Bowl weekend. Everyone was talking about Nick Diaz, GSP. Condit came in like a natural-born killer. He was like a serial killer out there. That, would, that to me, was the best prime time, especially that closing sequence. And just came in there and beat him and, and had a perfect game plan. Say what you will about the fight, but he had the perfect game plan for Nick Diaz. And that fight went out the window. Probably a good thing for the UFC because, of course... Shortly thereafter, Nick Diaz was suspended by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, but he spoiled the big fight, and now we're just ignoring him again, talking about another big fight, forgetting the fact that, and I think it's a big point. He, he glossed over it, but I do think it's a big point to make. Since Super Bowl weekend, Carlos Condit has been thinking about one guy. He knew he was going to fight GSP. He told the UFC, I'm waiting. So he never had to think about Ellenberger or Catman or Hendricks, any of those guys. He knew he was fighting this one guy. GSP since then, think back to where GSP was in February. GSP was on crutches. He was just trying to get back on his feet. He was trying to get to 100%. He only got to 100% recently. He's been thinking about that. Sure, Condit may have been on his mind, but that wasn't his 100% focus. That's a big deal. I think that's a very big deal, especially for a guy who likes being in that underdog role, who likes being the spoiler, all that stuff that he just said. I think that's a big deal, and I, I, I'm so fascinated in this fight. And I love the fact that the UFC is already promoting it. We've got a month now of promotion. You've got the Macau fight a week before, but you know it's really all hands on deck for UFC 154. And I love the, the, the best thing to happen to GSP. The best thing to happen to him was this time away. Think about him getting booed, UFC 129 in Toronto, that huge fight. He hasn't fought since then. Obviously, I'm saying the best thing. I mean, he was injured. It's horrible for him. But it's almost like distance makes the heart grow fonder. So everyone's so excited to see him back. Number one, number two draw in the company. Um, this is good for his brand in a weird way. And it's good for him. He said he lost his love for the sport. And now he appears to have gotten it back. So uh, we'll have a lot of time to talk about UFC 154. I love that fight. I love the, 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 the top two fights. And, of course, I love the fact that it's in the great city of Montreal, Quebec, Canada. 